folks drama been drama arab drama ole drama kila kitu pamoja aya ya 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 today i have the best news you've ever had in a very very long time and this happened a few days ago yeah and it is linked to the global crisis yeah and i'm going to come back to it very very shortly first of all i want to give you a heads up i have come to the realization yeah that there are few members of this channel who are way ahead of everybody including me and i'm talking about information related to the late professor ken walibora somebody was on my case giving me a heads up very early even before the results of the postmortem on professor walibora were out chris please investigate and give us your view yeah because indications were that there was foul play and they were absolutely correct yeah and i got the information a few hours later <laughs> lakini sina my feelings yeah it happens who knows maybe this person was even involved in the very exercise he was inside that room with the other doctors and pathologists who knows anyway on our show today i have prepared something for you very thorough yeah on this professor the late professor of the kiswahili language kiswahili kitukuzwe yeah because that is our language our local native language yeah in kenya and indeed in many parts of africa and we shall dive into that immediately we are through with the good news maybe i also need to tell you yeah give you a heads up concerning the extra videos i'm now producing because i have realized that sometimes when i produce a video there's some very important information hidden deep in that video and therefore virtually every day i will reproduce excerpts of that brief section within one of my videos and post it on this channel and so don't start sending angry comments oh chris una repeat si uli sama jana relax yeah i'm doing my best to keep up with the normal schedule so if you see the extra videos remember others are benefiting from them because they didn't catch the long kumekucha video yeah yeah the good news i remember with fondness 2 three decades ago when journalists were journalists and the media was a media that you could trust in most parts of the world and we had very quick sharp minds who would quickly analyze breaking news yeah, and break it down for us in magazines like time yeah time was a weekly magazine that was very expensive even in those days for my small income in those days but i used to make an effort to pick up a copy every week more so because those days i was an african yeah very keen on american politics but folks those days are long gone because the piece of information i'm about to give you should have been analyzed yeah and headlines produced across the world yeah because it was very significant and i don't believe for one minute that this did not happen because we no longer have sharp minds in the media no i think it's because the media these days yeah most of the big media houses have an agenda and if a story does not fit the agenda and the agenda of the investors they just ignore it if it doesn't fit in with the instructions scare 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 spread fear yeah amongst uh, humans make people terrified yeah if any information comes out that will reduce that terror reduce that fear it is now clear the media in the west big media houses will just totally ignore it now this is the information 
until a few days ago, the data being used to make decisions on this virus, including the decisions that were made across the globe to lock down entire economies, all that data that governments were using to make decisions, indeed including the government of the United States, was from the World Health Organization and Akina Bill Gates. And I'm sure most of us know those two are one and the same thing. You remember the projections? 10,000 people will die. 20,000. We expect a million. <laughs> yeah, those figures. But then a few days ago, the United States announced that they now had their own data, real data, based on what has been unfolding. Not computer simulated figures hiked up to the highest number possible, which were being fed to us by Bill Gates and company. That single change yeah, by one government in the world, the United States government, is nothing short of being a game changer. And I'm going to explain why. The U.S. is extremely influential around the world. The U.S. has also got its competitors, people who compete with the United States in the world market yeah, for various uh, products and services. And hold on to that thought for a minute. Now, this new data is what is being used by the United States government to announce yeah, a very shocking and indeed very unexpected move. And that move is to end the lockdowns in the next two weeks or so. Yeah, that is in the month of May. Now, we have already seen other governments here and there across the globe cautiously lift some of the restrictions and open up, you know, a few businesses to cautiously restart as yeah, they keep their eyes on the data. And I don't know what data they were using. Yeah, most probably it's data they generated in their own individual countries. But all these moves have not had much impact. In fact, I know most of you are not even aware. You're hearing that for the first time. But now that the U.S. are going to come out of lockdowns starting in early May, it is safe to predict that many other governments worldwide will follow suit yeah, and do exactly what the Americans will do. Because globally, there's another crisis, yeah, indeed even bigger than this pandemic, that is brewing. And that is financial and to do with the economies. What economists and experts from all over the world are calling the worst economic depression in the history of the human race. And naturally, you can't tackle that problem when people are at home, not working. Now, in my view, when this is all over, somebody needs to do a thorough investigation yeah, to find out where these initial figures yeah, that caused the entire globe to go on a lockdown came from, how they were generated, and what the real motive of generating those exaggerated, grossly exaggerated figures was. Because those are the very same figures African countries, including Kenya, used to institute partial lockdowns. Go home, they told people. Businesses were shut, etc., etc., based on that data. Bill Gates and World Health Organization data. Now, please allow me a few minutes to talk to those who are spiritual. You will remember that we had a prophecy yeah, from a man of God. I carried that video in a playlist on this channel where he said that the power, in fact, the way he put it was very interesting. He said that the power of this virus will start to dramatically 
reduce after the end of the Jewish Passover. Now, the Jewish Passover this year was between the 8th of April. It started on the evening of the 8th of April and ended on the evening of the 16th of April. Now, why did he put it like that? Why did he say the power of this virus will start to reduce? Well, it's because at the end of it all, this thing is spiritual. Just think about it. Something that causes the entire globe to go on a shutdown based on computer simulations and estimates. That is not a simple thing. Yeah, that's not something that can happen just like that. And so it seems that this prophecy is coming to pass because the date today is the 18th of April. And this dramatic turnaround happened indeed before the 16th. Or was it on that date? Anyway, bottom line, that prophecy seems to be coming to pass. For those who are praying, please don't relax your prayers. Yeah. Although it seems yeah, that God Almighty has given the human race a second chance. So the big question is what are you going to do with this second chance? Now don't worry, I'll put a link to that uh, particular video where this prophecy was so that you can review it after you're through with the show today and see for yourself and hear for yourself what the prophecy was all about. Now, for the rest of us, and indeed because there are people on this channel who love to put words in my mouth, let me make myself very clear. The government in Kenya is of course very eager yeah, to ease the restrictions because obviously it is not in the interest yeah, for the economy to crumble. Yeah, they want people to get back to work. And the role everybody can play in helping these restrictions come to an end ASAP is to follow the guidelines, to ensure that this virus is not being spread, to take the instructions seriously so that the curve is flattened and therefore there will be no reason for the restrictions of staying at home. People will go back to work. But if you misinterpret the information I've just given you and you relax and you ignore the instructions and enough people do that, it will be disaster. Yeah, so much so that even as other countries come out you know, of their lockdowns and partial lockdowns, it will not be practical yeah, based on the figures yeah, of those who are testing positive and even those who are passing on. It will not be practical for us to go back. Yeah, so that is very important. Anyway, isn't that the best news ever? Yeah, that the data being used now is data that is closer to the real thing and further away from computer simulations based on data fed from who knows where. All clearly designed to spread fear and terror. Indeed, it is safe to say that if people had not used those figures, no country in Africa today would be on lockdown. I don't think so. Apart from maybe South Africa. Yeah, and South Africa has its own issues, which I would not like to go into now. Yeah, maybe I will at a future date. Now, before we wrap this up, there's something else very important I need to add. One of the instigators, one of the people who really pushed yeah, for the world to abandon, and especially the US, to abandon yeah, those figures from the World Health Organization and Bill Gates, and to now start relying on their own figures, is the President of the United States, Donald Trump, a man whom many people do not like, and especially in Africa. And as I've always said, that dislike is based on fake stories in the Western media, slanted and twisted stories, twisted for an agenda on Donald Trump. But you need to know, that man you don't like, 
played a major role yeah, in this latest development that is the best news ever. Now on to Professor Ken Walibora. Now the late Ken Walibora got known by most Kenyans, became famous as a result of his stint with NTV, part of the Nation Media Group in Kenya. Yeah. And he was the news anchor for the Swahili edition for quite a number of years. And he wowed many people in Kenya and beyond yeah, with this masterful understanding and use of the Kiswahili language. Now it is interesting in this life that when you see the final product of a man and you envy that man, you don't want to dive into his past to find out the struggles yeah, and the efforts he had to put in to get to where he got. And Walibora's story is super fascinating. He was born on 6th January 1964 in Bungoma County. He was the last born. And after he completed his high school, yeah, he ended up as an English and Swahili teacher for quite a number of years. And then in 2004, he decided to go back to school yeah, and join the parallel program at the University of Nairobi where he studied for a Bachelor of Arts degree in Literature and Swahili. He then went on to do his Master's in the United States at the Ohio State University at Columbus. He was also a very prolific writer yeah, and his most famous runaway bestseller titled Siku Njema, which has been a set book for secondary schools, Kiswahili subject, for many years. Now, all indications are that it will be very difficult to be able to ascertain exactly what happened on that fateful Friday, April 10th, 2020, when Professor Ken Walibora passed on. Initial reports indicated that he had been run over by a matatu along Landy's Road. But then there were some eyewitnesses who said that actually what happened is that he was running, being chased by five people. And he was running to cross the road when the matatu hit him. Well, now his case has been taken over by the DCI homicide department, which means they're treating this as a possible homicide. And what triggered that move were the results of the post-mortem, yeah, which indicated some wounds in his body that were not consistent yeah, with just being knocked over by a matatu. Now, all this happened along Landis Road in Nairobi. And for those who know that road, it is usually very busy with very many people, very many cars. And although there are security cameras in the area, yeah, it is not clear yeah, whether detectives will be able to find some useful clues yeah, to try and piece together this mystery. Because it is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Yeah, it's possible to find it, but uh, <laughs> it requires quite a lot of work. But to deepen the mystery even further, the professor did not live anywhere near that area because he lived in Lovington and he was a lecturer at the Riara University yeah, at the School of International Relations and Diplomacy. And so one of the first puzzles that has to be solved is what was he doing in that area? Answering that question alone will go a long way in helping to solve this disturbing mystery. I believe at this juncture, rather than to speculate too much, we need to wait for more information from the investigators, and then we'll be able to be in a better position to piece together some possible scenarios. Safiri Salama, Professor Walibora, Mpakele Siku, Tutakutana Tena. Until next time, this is Chris.
kumekuja. 